you did a study. It was a computer modeling study uh, that was a what's called a three-dimensional computer model. We looked at the effects of converting all the vehicles in the United States from gasoline vehicles to ethanol vehicles, uh, where the ethanol is produced from either corn or from prairie grass. And we also then applied health effect data and to look at what's the net effect on health of the gasoline versus E85, which is the high blend of ethanol that we looked at. And we found that by doing this conversion, uh, that the death rate in the U.S. might increase by about uh, 200 per year compared to 10,000 deaths already occurring due to gasoline vehicles. We'd add another 200 deaths per year if we converted all the vehicles to uh, high blend ethanol vehicles. In other words, there was an increase in death on average in the U.S. And this applied also to hospitalizations and to emergency room visits due to asthma. Uh, so we find that at best, uh, ethanol is not going to be any better than gasoline in terms of the health effects. And this is important because uh, many policies have been driven by this contention that there is an improvement of air quality uh, due to using ethanol in fuel. We get half a percent benefit of reduction in carbon emissions throughout the U.S. if we convert to E85 where the ethanol is produced from corn. Half a percent. Now, if we look at the land use required to do this conversion, that's shown here. This yellow box represents the land area that would be needed to convert all the vehicles in the U.S. to ethanol, high blend ethanol vehicles, where the ethanol is produced from corn. So this is the land area required to grow the corn. The red box is the land area of the U.S. needed to convert all the vehicles in the U.S. to high blend ethanol vehicles, where the ethanol is produced from prairie grass. But that would mean you get a net benefit in terms of carbon of only 4%. 4% benefit if you converted 30% of the vehicles in the U.S. to uh, cellulosic ethanol vehicles. And if the population increased 4%, that would be wiped out. But we need to address global warming. We need an 80% reduction in carbon emissions. So what ways can we do that? Well, if we work, want to focus on the vehicles, Battery electric vehicles powered by renewable energy, such as wind and solar power, or hydrogen fuel cell vehicles powered by wind and solar power, when the hydrogen is produced by electrolysis from wind or solar power, can reduce the emissions 98%. The green box is the land area of the U.S. required uh, to convert all the vehicles in the U.S., to battery electric vehicles where the batteries were powered by wind energy. And the green represents the land area required to separate the wind turbines. You would reduce the death rate due to air pollution by 10,000 per year, which you're not doing by the ethanol in either one of the ethanol cases. In fact, those people who have been supporting ethanol have been using this climate argument and the air pollution argument to support their arguments to say this is an overall beneficial thing. But as we learn more and more about ethanol, we are finding that these early claims of benefits don't stack up. 